Alrighty, folks, what's going on? This is Matt here for Talk One Linux Tech Gaming, where it's the fusion of Linux technology and gaming. And we are looking at another switching to Linux video. Um, it's time to switch to Linux. This is from, I believe, Michael Horn, if I remember correctly. Yep. Um, I've watched a few of his videos. I'm indifferent as far as the the presentation and all that stuff. Um, it's more the statement of fact in the, it's time. Maybe personally, like if, if that's your decision, I'm not going to, it sounds more generic, like generalized statements of like fact that uh, <laughs> we all know I'm not a fan of. So uh, let's roll into this, see what he actually has to say. See if there's actually some structured reasons that he might actually have in this. Usually you're starting off with Microsoft so from what I can see. So this ought to be interesting. Sense of humor is really something else. You all probably remember this neat little AI feature that Microsoft thought was a good idea to install on your PC. Microsoft Recall, the tool that should help you find information that you once looked at by making screenshots of your desktop, no matter what you're doing at the moment. But no worries, it's of course encrypted and safe from unauthorized access. So nothing can go wrong, right? Right? In today's video, we are going to talk about Microsoft, Windows 11, its AI future, and why you might want to consider switching to Linux. Right, so I'm gonna be honest with you, this whole hype around artificial intelligence, especially when it comes to system integration, leaves me a bit worried. For starters, everything's just marketing. A lot of brands and companies that jumped on the AI hype train sell the same products they would have without this marketing name. Now okay, many solutions or products might have already used machine learning techniques beforehand, which is not really the same as today's large language models, but it's being marketed as such. Most vacuum robots, for example, don't really use AI, since they just measure a room and keep improving their map. You know, brute force it. But why am I even telling you this if this video is about Windows? Well, because here's the thing. While AI solutions like ChatGPT and Microsoft Copilot might be marketed as being intelligent, they are actually just large language models, which analyze and combine patterns that they gather from their huge repository of information. The most basic and almost insulting example of this are translators, which have been using similar technologies for a long time. Maybe not just as advanced as in recent years, but it's the same building blocks essentially. Not a problem with AI in general. My problem, uh, so I want to, as far as the whole AI thing, uh, my problem is not so much the been there, done that, all that kind of stuff. Actually, my problem is the integration into a local desktop. We're turning the desktop slash local computing experience and relying solely on a network kind of computing experience. What happens if that network goes down? You have a useless hunk of shit that does nothing locally cool uh not to mention microsoft does not have the best track record for security plain text storage and all the other stuff that is was shown with the uh my, uh the windows recall feature like there, there's a lot of stuff um how much data gets sent to microsoft for copilot like how much am i still being forced to send you even if i don't use copilot as an example, Windows Recall, you're still sending the shit elsewhere. I didn't want to use it. So there, there's more of a a trust issue that I, uh, should be had with um, your local computing experience should be your local computing experience. And you should control what information is sent and received and given and exchanged. Whereas most of the local OSs are not allowing you to do that anymore from the commercial perspective. Super fucking annoying, super fucking creepy. Like 1984 Big Brother shit, just with corporations instead of just the fucking government. General is that you somehow need to collect all this data and store it somewhere. And this is expensive. Like really expensive. And it's one of the reasons on why I don't really trust AI solutions that want to integrate themselves into your system. 
like Copilot is free. Of course, it currently only works on Copilot Plus PCs, which are a bit more expensive, but they don't nearly cover the cost of running this thing. Given that Microsoft already has the majority of PC users and software solutions, it begs the question on why they insist on it being free. Like they don't gather more Windows license sales because of that. They can, however, sell your data and later on also put Copilot behind a paywall that is being advertised to you all the time. And they kind of have to do something like that, given how expensive it is to run it. So if you have a program like Microsoft Recall, sure, it might be able to run locally on your system and your PC doesn't send the screenshots to Microsoft. But what it could send are some commonly searched queries. For example, if a lot of people in a similar area search for the same thing that they once accessed, then Recall could send the data to Microsoft, which they use to a improve the model and b they can sell to advertisers so that they can offer them personalized ads. Like, I just don't believe that Microsoft is developing a feature like this, gets a lot of backlash, delays it and also makes it optional, and then they come back and remove the option to entirely get rid of it. Like what? They want you to use it, and again, they already have the majority of PC users, so they have to generate revenue from somewhere. Like, So what this basically boils down to is your local OS, that uh, has traditionally been Windows, Mac OS, et cetera, has essentially become software as a service. It's just operating system as a service instead. Tack on fees, et cetera, et cetera. Paywalls sounds kind of familiar. I would call it open core, but even the core is not open. Um, freeware, freemium, like your OS is freemium. That's essentially where it's going. Uh, you know, Microsoft doesn't make you technically activate Windows anymore. It hassles you. Like, you can't change a fucking background. What do you fucking do? And you can't change a personalize a few things. That seems to be about the only limitation anymore as far as Windows, as far as its activation and licensing and all that shit. And there's ways around that. Um, so, like, what people don't realize is just as, and, you know, we're guilty of this with, like, allowing this shit with, like, Android and other OSs and shit. We are beholden to all the data that we send to these companies. So, therefore, they can query, as you mentioned, and basically make us the product that they are going to sell advertising to. So, we go and buy shit. The more eyes, more money, blah, 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 blah. Go down the fucking rabbit hole. Again, I get it. I'm just saying it's still a scammy, shady business model because this is about, about as monetization through loot crates kind of shit because you're gambling about what data is being sent. You're also gambling about trusting on these fucking companies that are for profit. Like, this is some tinfoil hat stuff, but they're pushing AI into Windows like there's no tomorrow. And I don't think that it gets better anytime soon. Windows 10 is end of life next year. Windows 11 gets all this controversial AI stuff, which they already had to limit due to security risks. And even if a Windows 12 is actually coming, it probably will be even worse in terms of privacy. I genuinely believe that switching to Linux might be your best bet here, since not only is it completely free to use, but it's all... And there it is. For the love of God, stop fucking associating cost as the perk. Fucking hate that. Fuck, is that annoying? That is the worst selling point. Because the people you're talking to, like, generally the people you're talking to, are go uh, they associate free with shitty. Freemium, freeware, all bad when it comes to software as it relates to software. Those terms specifically related to those types of software is a shitty experience on the platform that they are coming from. So stop using the cost as the perk. I hate that fucking selling point. For some people, free is good but it can't be the main marketing point and every fucking Linux channel fucking harps on this stupid fucking point about free. 
Windows is free too. So isn't fucking Mac OS. Go download, you can go to Microsoft, download a Windows 11 ISO, burn it to a, a USB or ISO or whatever fucking medium you want and install it and have a function, functional OS running on your hardware. You have very few limitations as far as actually running on the hardware anymore. This isn't Windows XP or Vista where you had all these stupid hoops you had to jump through. Microsoft essentially doesn't fucking care about the license anymore. You are the one selling them. You are giving them money by giving them your data. That's the whole point. So again, stop using free as the marketing. Rant over. Sorry. Anyway. Also open source and therefore very modular. For example, if a bigger distribution like Ubuntu decides to integrate AI features like Windows has, someone can fork it and remove all that stuff again. But luckily, we aren't even near that anyway. On Linux, you can still have your own local user, which doesn't need an online account like on Windows. But you're still welcome to integrate your cloud solutions if you really want to. Linux dis Yes, control. You control what data and to what companies you decide to integrate into your computing experience. That is the whole selling point. That is the whole perk. That is everything that I talk about. So, the, so yes, control is the selling point for Linux and the reason to look at it and switch because you get to control your computing experience. Distributions also come in many different flavors represented by desktop environments. You want an interface that looks similar to Windows 10 by default? The desktop environments KDE Plasma and Cinnamon both offer a traditional taskbar and start menu. They are also much more customizable than Windows by design, which means that you can turn them into something completely different if you want to. Are you coming from a Mac or just want a simple and minimalistic design? Then check out the desktop environment GNOME, which by the way is also the default on Ubuntu. Then there are of course very lightweight desktop environments, especially suited for older PCs, yet still customizable, or you go for a customized hybrid of desktop environments like GNOME on Sorin OS. You simply pick a desktop environment that you find interesting, go to their official website and pick a distribution based on how fast you want to receive new updates. If you want to install software on Linux, then the preferred way is through a package manager, which you Again. The, the point and the reason he's telling you that it's time to switch is about control. <sighs> you know, I make long reaction videos sometimes and I ramble, but goddamn, this, this could have been a short, this could have been a TikTok, this could have been a 10 second video. This could have been a, uh, you know, how do I deploy a distro kind of video? Use the fucking package manager. That's how end of debate. <laughs> God damn. Um, but what he's saying and the reasons he's giving is about control and the examples he's giving about recall and that stuff. Yes, it does matter. And these are the reasons why you want to look at the control that Lennox gives you. But God, like it, the problem I think is that I've seen so many of these videos that they harp on the same points that after a while it, it, it and it's, not about the simplified messaging you know it's about oh privacy and there's like 15 reasons that you can really combine down to one and it's super annoying to to sit through those same 15 reasons it's like watching that that training video at work like 75 times a year that you don't want to hear or you have to listen to like once a week kind of thing that's kind of what these videos remind me of and it's not against you know, Michael Horn here specifically, it's just that style and the reasoning and whatnot is the same thing because I've, I've said this for, I don't know how many videos and how long at this point, Linux is about control. It's about putting the personal back into your computing experience because you personally chose the computing experience as opposed to a corporation choosing your computing experience because it's PC, not CC. Because you're personal computing, not corporate computing. It usually comes in the form of a software store. 
In here you can download browsers, peripherals configuration software, communication apps and office suites. Gaming on Linux is also not big of a problem anymore. Valve's compatibility layer Proton, but also different solutions based on the same tools can run Windows games and programs like app launchers, and nowadays even many anti-cheat protected games, if the developers are kind enough to enable support. Like I'm gonna be honest, for the use case of most people, Linux is more than enough. Sure, there are certain industries that cannot switch that easily. But compared to all global users of every age, this doesn't really matter since support follows where the masses are. Like this is very subjective, but I feel like that Windows is actively becoming worse. It's an operating system that you paid for, either directly or indirectly, and you still receive ads and features that you might not want. You effectively pay to get less, while on Linux you are free to contribute to open source projects voluntarily. And these projects actually do the things that you want from them. Maybe Microsoft comes to their senses, but given the investment they already made into AI technology, I wouldn't really expect it anytime soon. I have been using Linux for more than two and a half years now. And I couldn't care less on what Microsoft does with their operating system. What I do care however is to show you that it doesn't have to be this way. And I really hope that some of you are ready to take the plunge into the Linux desktop experience. I believe that it would be interesting for you either way. But that's enough from me. What do you Okay, so is it time to switch to Linux? It might be time to look at all the alternatives. That's the reality. You know, look at Android, look at Google, you know, look at Chrome OS, look at, uh, was it Fire, Frida, Frida, whatever OS, look at, look at Linux distros, look at Mac OS, look at iOS, determine whatever your fucking computer needs and experiences are and choose your computing experience. What I will say is that to condense down his video, because I've already added like eight minutes to his the short version of all of this is control. If you want control and to determine your support length of your PC, your hardware, if you want to determine the support length of your software, if you want to determine your GUI experience, all of that stuff, and you want control of all of that, Linux is probably the best option for you to go. Do note research and everything else is probably going to be involved, but it is no different than if you went to Mac OS while you would have the predefined experience. Not everything's going to work on Mac OS either from a hardware or software point of view. So open-mindedness about gaining that control and what that control gives you, but also some of the hurdles that come with it, but to condense down everything that all these talking points that every other Linux video, anytime talks about privacy and all the other stuff, it boils down to control. That's the selling point for Linux. Personal control of your computing experience. All the other reasons don't fucking matter. They play into the control aspect. Sell Linux the way it should be. And it really just boils down to you having a personal computing experience that you determine via the control it gives you as opposed to a CC experience. And I don't mean carbon copy. I'm talking about a corporately controlled experience. Right, wrong, or indifferent. You guys let me know. Is it time to switch to Linux if you haven't? I switched a long time ago. I use everything, but my main platform is Linux. And insert any distro. I can jump through the hoops on Linux distros to make things work. Windows and Mac OS, they make you play in that sandbox without the sand. <laughs> so, uh, original video and any other Patreon, Humble Bundle, all that crap is down in the description and you guys know what to do. I'll catch you on the next. Peace.